Hi everyone, good morning. I hope you can hear me. Uh, it's great to be speaking here and it's great to see uh, congratulations to E4M, Impact and Fitch group uh, to put together such an amazing uh, conference where we have independent agencies coming together. So uh, please give them a big round of applause. This is what our ecosystem needs, especially where we are at. Now I've got an interesting topic. I've got 15 minutes uh, to talk about the rise of AI and what it means for your strategy and what it means for your business. Uh, I'm gonna try and do some justice to it. Uh, so the, the, the truth is AI is here and it's powerful. So it is, it is here and it's here to stay. Now this is an example of something that AI created, uh, 25 plus million views in a day and 12,000, uh, 120,000, uh, sorry, 12,000 royalties. So this was in a day of royalty with uh, so, many, so many views. So this is the capability of AI. Uh, it's a, it's a piece of music, I think we can play it. Can we hear it? I came out with my ex like Selena, the flex. Bumping just some beer, but a fever ain't left. She know what she need, or I need, or she guess who the artist is? My best, Sorry? Wait. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's, uh, it's basically AI taking an artist, put their writing style together, release the complete uh, track together, and you're releasing, you're getting tons of views and you're getting tons of revenues. Now, that's what AI has the potential to create. Uh, I'm gonna switch gears a bit from AI to the absolute truth of our business. You know, So yes, this is the potential of AI, this is everything that it can create. And then there's an absolute truth to our business, which is that some people may not like what I have to say here, but we're effectively a headcount business. You know, we're a margin trading and a headcount business. So why our business works is that in our four walls, each of our companies, in our four walls, we enable a unique environment where minds work together with a unique combination of culture and systems to enable better productivity. So effectively, why the client hires us is because we can get more productivity per individual in our four walls versus what the same individuals would be in the client's walls. So what does AI mean for our business? You know, the, what we do is we effectively do headcount at fractional cost. So we, on the same 100 people, we deliver effectively 30, 35% more value. And that 30, 35% more value enables us the license to give a 15 to 20% margin on our PNL to charge the client effectively, net net. If I just break the business down, that's what it's about, right? So when I look at AI and when I look at you know what it means for our business, what we really need to do is we need to harness this AI. You know, it's almost like uh, uh, sugar in the milk. So it's it's the same milk that we've got. It's the same four walls that we've got. It's the same headcount that we've got. Now we've got a bunch of new people which get added to our workforce and that's how we can harness the AI talent. So what it's, it's actually an opportunity for us to reimagine the way we do business, to reimagine our culture, to be able to integrate AI into our culture and our systems to be able to get more efficient with AI so that we can continue to maintain on that same headcount business a 30 to 35% more productivity with the maintenance of the 20% margin, give or take. And we've always been better at harnessing talent it's time we do the same with AI talent. So I think most of the amazing companies in this room, we are all good at being able to harness talent much better than another set of people, which is why we have a reason to exist in our business. Now you add AI into the mix and we basically have to learn how to harness this AI talent better. And I specifically call it AI talent because it's got the ability to produce, it's got the ability to create. Now, the reason why AI matters to us is because it's a 24 seven creatively able machine or a analytically able machine. So deliberately I'm using the word able because yes, it is creative. It's, it has the ability to be creative, but it cannot do anything if it's not harnessed or guided somewhere. Most of the design work that you're seeing or most of the media work that you're seeing or technology work that you're seeing, you have humans on top of the AI sitting. So, I mean, all of the discussions with respect to, you know, 8 billion world population getting replaced by AI, it's not gonna happen because we, you know, we need our stomachs to feed and we're not gonna get wiped out overnight unless the whole race gets wiped out overnight. So it's a creatively able machine. It's got to be at our disposal for us to be able to harness and direct. And the able is important because without human intervention, AI is nothing. So it's, 
got the ability to do ultra personalization in real time. It does a few things better than human beings. It's got the able to do ultra personalization at scale in real time, read and process large amounts of data. It's got the ability to help people see beyond what they can see. And you know, all of this design AI stuff, I think the most interesting part of the design AI stuff is that actually, and I go back to Isaac Newton, right? He says that we see further because we stand on the shoulders of our fathers. What AI is actually in an everyday basis, somebody whose shoulders you can sit on. So you can see a little further and you can add your bit. You can see a little further and add a bit. That's what our workforces are effectively doing with AI. So the ability to be real time and the power of holy grail of creative media and technology is actually with the coming in of AI. You know, we've heard this since 2000, I think 2008, when Google started talking about creative media technology and the synchronicity of it. It's not really happened, so I think as in independent businesses and independent Indian agencies, this is actually our opportunity to create a unique service offering that really well ties together the creative media technology part, because with AI, we have the ability to harness it much better. And the opportunity is the ability to create transactional excellence for consumers at every step of the journey, whether it is on the creative, whether it is on the media, or the technology platform where the interaction happens. So. The, the coming, in, coming in of all this is actually increasing the power that we can bring to the table. And I think that's the real opportunity or real power of AI. Uh, this is what I mean by the ability to help people see beyond what they can see. This was some of our work which was uh, well covered in the press. Uh, but if I really had to look at it and if I had to take a step back, what this was able to do is the design team that was on it, uh, when they put in the prompts, they weren't, you know, they didn't imagine this off the top of their head. Once they put it as a prompt in AI, that's when they start seeing various permutations and combinations, and that's when a creative product is able to edge beyond what its potential was. So I think, how do we actually turn the culture that makes AI our friend, and therefore increase that productivity on the same set, is what I think we need to really uh, focus on. So on AI versus human intelligence, I think the discussion needs to be AI and human intelligence merging together to be able to create better productivity in our four walls to be able to maintain our margins. You know, that's effectively, I think, the net of the discussion. And AI can actually share our burden of knowledge. So the, you know, most of us are always complaining about the teams in, in our companies doing a lot of routine, mundane work. So that is what I call the burden of knowledge. And AI can actually share and lighten our burden of knowledge so that we can focus on crafting compe compelling narratives creating emotions and forging connections at a technology and media layer. And so how can we build and integrate AI inside our organizations? Uh, I think the first thing we need to do is enable a culture where people embrace change and not fear it. Because there's a lot of chatter outside. I can see that it's kind of dipping now. Uh, but there, there was a sense of fear among workforces about AI being replaced. So, one is to enable a culture where people embrace change and not fear it. Uh, this is something that we did. We launched uh, 22, we call them Shabots, uh, specifically trained using prompts for separate use cases. Uh, and we've got about 5,000 plus conversations in the last one month. Uh, so some of the things that we've trained the bots on, you know, things that people do on a routine basis, data crunching, writing captions. Uh, we actually even trained a bot to act like a client and give feedback. Uh, we've, uh, you know, we've got this thing called uh, Persona GPT, so that if there's an increased uh, emphasis on, uh, on on knowing consumers, it's able to craft consumer personas as well. So that's helping our teams actually get uh, better at what they do and how they deliver the work. So that's one is embrace a embrace a culture where people embrace change and not fear it. Um, push the creative boundaries and be open to new possibilities. So I think now is the time to just throw our teams into the neck of it and say that, look, here are the tools, go and use it, go and create it, and get the visibility out there. Um, also create an environment where you celebrate the achievements of the ones who are using the AI well, because it's actually a new environment. It's a bit like, you know, I mean, after the waves, if you see 2008 was the social media wave, and then you had the programmatic wave, and now you have an AI wave which is here to stay. So it's actually a change in the way we work. Uh, and it's important to celebrate the members who are really pushing the limits. So whether it's incentive programs created for them or spot bonuses created for them, that might work really well. Um, and I think also, you know, most of the questions that come in from the client side, what, what we are seeing is make boundaries that help with creative regulations. We always get um, 
questions on the legalities of AI. So, you know, just educating the workforce on saying, look, here is where the boundaries of the legalities of AI are and are not is a good starting point so that you don't have to repeat a lot of these questions. So, you know, yes, leap, but leap with a fortified sense where you, you're kind of protecting yourself before you leap. So there's certain legalities which are not allowed, which it would be useful to get the teams uh, aligned with. And uh, what other skills should we invest in if we are building this AI culture? Uh, I think the other skills that we need is, you know, and this is particularly from the narrative of continuing to maintain our 30 to 35% uh, efficiency on the same workforce. So, you know, with the fact that the base is this way, you know, and you, you've actually got somebody sharing the burden of knowledge, this creatively able AI sharing the burden of knowledge, what we're gonna need from our workforce is we're gonna need better emotional intelligence, the ability to understand, use, and manage your own emotions in a positive way, sense problems in the market, emotional intelligence helps us connect with consumers better, helps us understand market dynamics better, helps us extract information from clients better. Uh, ethics and morality is gonna be big because you know, with everybody being able to create a lot more, uh, the one you can trust the most is the one who will have the long game in the market. Uh, this interdisciplinary knowledge, I think, is very important because, you know, and I said this about the creative media and tech, and I think over the next five years, this is exactly what is going to happen. You will be able to see, I, I don't think we're going to see too many, hey, I'm just creative, hey, I'm just media, hey, I'm just technology, and you will see clients stitching their mandates together. Uh, we will see that as a, you know, as a, as a large competitive uh, advantage in the marketplace because everybody is going to have the same playing field. So therefore, what we will get is this creativity, innovation, and critical thinking are going to be the important skills of our workforce, and those are the ones that are going to really edge forward. So our teams have to be able to be adaptable and flexible, and that's something for us to be able to put into our programs where we create a learning environment inside our organizations. So inside our organization, we're investing heavily in building this adaptability, flexibility through our learning initiatives, and that's something that we are really preparing for this next five years wave that is about to come. And uh, so it will result in incremental value for us and better margins for us, also incremental value for clients, because ultimately what we are going to be able to deliver, that 30-35% edge that we're going to be able to maintain is going to be passed back to clients and give us the license to continue our margins. Uh, so I'm really excited about this, and I think, you know, in the spirit of what we are seeing here with the IDAC and a lot of independent digital agencies, actually this is our opportunity to actually uniquely tie in a very interesting service offering that lets us go and serve customers all over the world. Uh, so that's uh, it for me in terms of what I think we can do on AI, not versus age, uh, human intelligence, but AI and human intelligence. Thank you very much.